Hello guys, what is going on? I'm Nozda and welcome back to another weekly comic review. Today, we've got a bunch of comics lined up. So just to say quickly, I am not going to be covering the death of Superman or Black Panther. Um, Black Panther, I just really, really didn't like the first two issues. Um, death of Superman doesn't really interest me. I think what I'll do is I will do a review specifically for it if the story is very good once all four parts are out because it's only a four part story. Um, but yeah, if you don't know how this works, you can go in the description to like the specific chapters uh, that you want to read the specific issues um, and you can go and click on the timestamp next to the name of the issue you want to read. Or should I say the issue that I read which you want to hear the review of. Not you've already. I assume you've already read the issue if you want to know the the review. Anyway, uh, let's list off the issues that are going to be in this video. So we have got Venom issue 5, uh, West Coast Avengers issue 1, we've got Spider-Man issue 5, we have got Avengers issue 6, Flash issue 53, Justice League Dark issue 2, and Mr. and Mrs. X issue 2. So yeah, let's get into the video. So starting off with Venom 5, my god, my god. Uh, best series at the moment, that's how I'm pretty sure. Like, um, it's been five issues now, I can safely say um, that this is probably the best series right now. Uh, strong first, oh, not strong first issue, sorry. Sorry, um, strong issue. Um, it's not mind-blowing as the past few issues have been, but if everything's mind-blowing, then nothing's mind-blowing. So I'm glad that it took a step back a bit just so we can sort of savor what's going on right now. Um, but it is, it's a very unique problem um, that they have in terms of the plot. Like, just talking about the plot, um, I like the fact that, the, um, that Donny Cakes has made it so that Eddie Brock and the... Venom symbiote or the new Venom symbiote has a very strange problem in that they have to plan an attack, they have to get ready for attack, whilst the person who they're going to attack or at least defend themselves from can see everything and knows exactly what's going on. That is very, very strange. I don't know how they're going to deal with it, but I'm excited to see. I'm excited. I'm excited to see how they will. Also, I'm very excited about the new bag of tricks that the Venom symbiote has got, and I'm excited to see what they can show off. I know this um, sort of like makes it really easy on Danny Cates, like because he can write himself into a corner, he can write himself into multiple corners, a little tiny box with four corners in which um, Eddie can't get out of, and then all of a sudden there's this new symbiote power that t totally makes sense because pretty much anything goes with a symbiote. Um, if we even look at Red Goblin, like he can basically just take away all symbi all like a symbiote's um, negative effects and like weaknesses, and just make him invincible, pretty much. Um, so anything goes when a symbiote gets an upgrade. So you know, it's kind of like um, a catch twenty two, if I'm using that phrase right, where we know that now the stakes are much less because of how easily. Um, the character can, can get out of situations just because you can just fling shit at a wall and it'll, and it'll stick, you know what I mean? Um, but also, I'm very excited to see what will happen because it can be anything and that's very exciting. I am slightly sad that the picture at the end, the panel at the end with all the guns could be... Like, they're alluding to the solution being just weapons and bigger guns and stuff like that. I said before that I'm excited to see how they can get out of the situation that they got right now, in which Noel can see everything. Um, and I was expecting or hoping, should I say, for like a Sherlock-esque style, like, super play 200 IQ, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, but just bigger guns doesn't seem too exciting. Hopefully they don't do that. Hopefully it's like, um, you know, it's... Hopefully they're throwing no off the scent like Null's like, oh, what are you going to do with guns when it turns out they've got this super intense, amazing plan. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see the next issue, very much so. Right, okay, moving on to West Coast Avengers issue one. It's a very interesting concept uh, to do with the whole reality TV stuff. That's very cool. Um, and I'm excited to see where that goes and what can happen with that. I'm very excited about that. Um, and it does actually, is a very good device when it comes to like getting um information and getting them um, and extracting ex exposition in like a very natural way so i'm happy about that and it also does wonders for character building and stuff like that as well so 
very happy with how the reality TV aspect is being used. I love the conflicting personalities. This wouldn't work without the conflicting personalities, honestly. We've got like a ragtag bunch of misfits basically trying to uh, be the West Coast Avengers, which is, I mean, if it's going to be run by Hawkeye or at least a Hawkeye, then you wouldn't expect anything less. Talking about the personalities, though, I think they are playing it very, very safe with this one. I don't, there's no risks, there's no major changes to characters. They're playing very, very much with new characters or minor characters or, char or characters where the main core audience has never heard of them. Or it would be very lucky whether they have heard of them or not. So there's no, there's not going to be any major changes to characters as there are many like, character arcs, especially early on. Um, because we're just getting used to these characters and getting, you know, all, all they needed to do was make sure that these characters weren't going to work well together. And then they had like a good story. So nothing safe, but then again, it is good. I may end up reading Gwenpool, honestly. If the characters are the same as it is in this issue, then I, I may read it. Because just that one three, three panel shot during the interview in which she ends up pulling out a rocket launcher was very, very funny. I also searched up the uh, B R O D O K, like the Bro Doc um, character at the end that appears at the end, and I think he is either brand new or very minor because there's nothing on the Marvel database or anything like that about the character. Um, but I am interested to see what his powers are and stuff like that. But I do think he's something to do with the guy who created the sharks, like the man sharks, land sharks at the end. It seems pretty obvious considering he leaped out of the water essentially. Um, and he, it did say he was created by something. So, you know, that makes sense. And that may be the keys to the plot. But overall, I'm not really too invested in the plot. As I'm not with a lot of the issues right now. I'm pri Apart from, like, Venom, I'm primarily just... Uh, the, the plot is just like a side thing and I'm more interested in the characters, which is kind of fresh with the with comics, to be honest. Moving on to Spider-Man issue 5. I do enjoy the plot and how the issue has accelerated the plot and like the, the plot device by showing the outcome of what will happen to Peter and Spider-Man if it's not resolved. This will play into the relatability of the Peter's actions, like depending on how stressful he can get and how sort of um, and how desperate he can get as well. Because seeing someone desperate and not getting why they're desperate can be really, really annoying. Um, but this will hopefully justify almost all his actions, which is very good. Also, I hope that the Strom stuff doesn't end up just being like some action panels. Like this, all the setup is just for some action panels because we got like quite a lot of panels. We ended up getting like. Well, it was, I would say it was easily more than 10 or 12 panels that we got of this guy. And if he's not going to be important, if he's just going to be some action panels um, alongside the actual conflict and the actual primary plot of these opening issues, which is Peter versus Spider-Man, then I'm just going to be very upset because I feel like this could have been done really well after the story that's happening right now. I don't think we need it. Uh, maybe it's setting up something in the future, I'm not too sure. But overall, I'm just I'm not too happy with how they're dealing with it right now. Overall, it was an okay issue. Not too excited because uh, there isn't really any stakes. Because what's going to happen? Like they're going to stay separate for longer. Like we're going to learn to live apart. You know what I mean? Like we know what's going to happen. Moving on to Avengers six. Honestly, I didn't really like the solution to the problem. It was so literal and so on the nose that I kind of wanted to barf. It was like it was the actual embodiment of the worst possible. We need to do this together. We need to join together moment. You know what I mean? I just really, really didn't like that. Overall, though, I did enjoy this arc. Honestly, I loved, I love all the characters. All the characters have really, really grown on me. Whilst I'm reading the separate comics alongside as well. You know, the characters are obviously barring Captain America. Captain America, I, I will always say is a shit character. <laughs> I, I haven't read an issue or a series of him being in it where he hasn't just been this plain, just hero character. There's not another dimension to him, which I'm really... I'm, I'm always annoyed about when I read him. Because it just feels like he doesn't need to say what he says, because we know... We can just assume that he said it at some point. Um, but I'm, I'm trying not to break Captain America too much. Overall, I just really, really love the characters, especially Ghost Rider. I want them to keep the team the way it is for now. I've been warned that that's not going to happen just based off other Avengers stuff. Um, but just so we can get some more character building, because character building is the main thing that I love about 
these big team ups. It's been the same with Justice League, Justice League Dark as well. Um, basically, with the team up comics, this is the the scenarios are always going to be batshit and out of this world, and they're not going to make sense. And the solution is always going to be stupid because of what it's like. Oh, I'm, the, 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 why is there a problem here? The, the Avengers, you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's so overpowered, overpowered, like all of them. But you know, like I, I'm just I'm just all in it for the characters. And when we got a character that's really cool, like Ghost Rider or She Hulk. Um, or even Thor in this matter with uh, Odin as well. That was really, really interesting. I enjoyed that. If you have been watching my videos whilst I've been reviewing The Flash, my god, you've known that I've been very, very upset with what's happening right now. Yet again, the biggest problem with The Flash that The Flash has to face is himself. And that's good in a lot of stories, but when it's repeated over and over and over and over again, it just it gets really really frustrating. I just wish that a problem didn't have to be amplified by the Flash's decision making all the time. Something which I liked though about the issue was I loved the cold backstory and how the hostage event changed him so much. But speaking about change, Barry still talks about change constantly, yet nothing at all is changing. Every character is the same. No, no character has changed. And he even finishes the issue with never trust a man named Cold. Right back to the beginning. Reverting back to the beginning. Because it started with him saying, Iris wants me to work with Cold. Iris wants me to change, you know. And then just instantly going back on that. Just because he couldn't see because of his emotions such a, a logical solution now i understand his decision making of wanting to learn about the strength force but my god when there's some so they've just op this destroyed the world swamp thing had to literally stitch it back together and he opened up the world to all these new forces he saw everyone around him dead all because of his emotions. He's not changing because everything was fixed. It was, it's like there's no consequences. It's like he's a four-year-old toddler. And because there's no consequences, he just acts the same way all the time. It's so frustrating. Fix Barry's character. Rant over for now. We'll probably get another rant in the next issue. Justice League Dark Issue 2. I love all the characters individually. And I think that is what's driving the story for me. They are all as odd as odd it is can be. And together they are no less stranger than they would be separate. And I'm just loving the characters honestly. The plot's fine but the characters specifically are really really cool. Like I'm behind... The motives of the protagonists, like uh, Zantana and uh, Diana, so uh, at least I care about the plot. I'm, I'm not enjoying the plot. I'm not. It's not like super interesting, but I care about it because I care that the characters care. And as long as the characters care, I'm gonna care. Overall, it was a really fun issue, and you can't knock a bit of Doctor Fate. Doctor Fate is always such a super interesting character, um, and the page comes alive when you see him because of all the light and stuff like that. And Justice League Dark is dark. It is definitely dark. Um, and it, like I said, it was good, but overall, it, because of all the magic going on, it could have been a lot more adventurous with the art style, but I understand it's trying to be a bit bleak and stuff like that, and super dark, and maybe even a bit gothic, um, especially with, like, the castle and stuff that they went to, but I just wish that they was a bit more adventurous with the art. Finally, the last comic, as I'm itching my armpits, lovely, Mr. and Mrs. X, issue two. This is how to use Deadpool. I hate that Deadpool has his own series. I've said this so many times. If, you watch, if you've heard me say it in multiple videos, I'm sorry. But you're, not, you're supposed to use Deadpool as a character. You're supposed to compliment other characters. He's not good with his own story. The only way he works is with other characters. The story is more than fine. I really do enjoy the whole aspect with the, with the honeymoon and stuff like that and the wedding. And... It was another side to superheroes that you don't usually get to see the romance and it actually working and the honeymoon and like it was just it was all really really cool just seeing that, but just seeing how Deadpool interacted with characters 
in this scenario was perfect. The back and forth dynamic between Gamb Gambit and Deadpool was specifically brilliant because of their history. I'm not insanely, ex I did say that the story was more than fine, but I'm not super excited about the plot. I'm excited about how the characters work in the plot. Like I'm excited about how the characters make decisions and how they deal with scenarios and what they say, quips and all. Um, and it's just, I'm excited about that in particular. And I'm excited about the future of the characters as well. Gambit, Gambit and Rogue, honestly, I'd like to see how the future pans out for them because they're interesting characters and I'm excited to see what, the, what happens in the future with them in particular. Anyway, just one more thing to say. Uh, make sure to check out my Patreon in the description. All the information is on there. My Patreon videos on there. It is not specifically to do with my YouTube channel. It's to do with me wanting to write a book. So if you're interested in supporting that or reading the first chapter for free, then make sure to go over there. All the information is on there. Also, I am an affiliate with a free comic book service. They make their own comic books for free. And if you use the code NOSDA, which is in the description, you will help support the channel if you describe if you decide to subscribe to them which you you get other benefits you don't get free comics removed if you don't if you subscribe for whatever reason i don't know why i'm, I'm sort of rambling now but anyway those two top links in the description uh that support me so if you would like to do that then you can do anyway that is going to be it for now guys so thank you guys for watching hopefully enjoyed the video make sure to like subscribe and all good stuff my twitter link is also in the description and so is my twitch and i shall see you in the next one goodbye